hi i'm charlotte welcome to shout it to the rooftops the bible says what i tell you in the dark speak in the light what i whisper in your ear the bible says proclaim from the roofs so that's what i'm gonna do shout it to the tops i guess that would put me on social media because these are the rooftops of today where everybody is hanging out and listening so matthew 10 27 shout it to the rooftops and I'm hoping you join with me to shout it to the rooftop ministries. I'm Charlotte, and I hope you enjoy my message today. Today, June 29th, Matthew 3:10a says, "Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit." will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Well, what does that say? What does that mean to me? That's gonna be three questions we're gonna answer. What does it mean to me? How do we live and who benefits? Those are the three questions we're gonna to answer today. What does this mean? But I'm not a tree. I have no interest in gardening. I don't own any trees. I don't, um, care either way what's a tree have to do with the bible and who are these trees god's word is talking about so let's see if we could figure this out together first the bible says the time is at hand god has the axe in his hand the judgment of the individual the persons the person who are not doing the good deeds are in danger of Keeping out of the future. Losing out on a future. Oh boy, what does that possibly make you think about? The results of not doing the right thing is going to bring about fatal consequences. In fact, that's exactly what the prophet was trying to tell the listening Pharisees and Sadducees. Remember, in Matthew, he was rebuking them. Um, he was telling them that, listen, John was telling them, listen, you all don't, aren't behaving. You all ain't doing the right thing. And you're coming up here accusing him of doing wrong. And you guys are not living so right. So he says, judgment is poised. God is already going to deal with you. So he says, so John goes on and explains. He says, the idea that doing good is being put it off. You're not doing the good that you should be. You're not having keeping God in your mind. And the idea that you are not taking care of each other produces bad fruit. That's what he's saying. So a tree that doesn't produce good fruit gets cut off. And that's exactly what John the Baptist was explaining to those around him. So here's the problem. One, how might we relate to God and how might we not get cut off as it says and what things do we need to do so that we can remain in god's grace or what are the things that we can do to preserve the life that we want to have as a human being in other words how do we avoid getting cut off axed as it says in the scripture axed well the first thing to bring about good dudes new dudes good deeds is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's first. Obeying his son is the first and most important thing God wants us to do. Receiving Christ as Lord and Savior, you produce good food, good fruits of obedience. Second, you inherit eternal life. So unless you can produce that righteousness that's in Christ, you will never be able to produce good fruits as far as God's concerned. Unless you obey Christ and do what the word says, Humble yourself, do good deeds, you will never be in favor with God. There's no other name under heaven and, ever, and earth whereby men must be saved. That's what the Bible says. So, first, good deed, the good life is to worship God through his son, Jesus Christ. Second, obey the word of God. Do what it says. Come to Jesus. Receive salvation. Find forgiveness for your sins. And in that way, you will produce good fruits. 
good deeds out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance of your love for Christ, out of the abundance of your love for God. Not works that say, this validates me, because the Pharisees thought they were doing all kind of works. They thought they were doing dressing right, looking nice, walking around town all proud, but they were empty inside. They were not obeying God. They were not taking care of the people. They were not attributing their wealth or their good life to God. They were had taken advantage of everybody, taking advantage of the people. And the Lord was very, very upset with them. And John the Baptist was, was, was criticizing them too. So here's the second thing we want to talk about. To fulfill, to have a full-grown tree that is already past its fruit-bearing season and nothing is there, the season has passed, the 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 ability to cultivate good fruit good fruit is gone and the tree is already full grown you're not going to get any fruit from this tree you're not going to have any any harvest from this tree john was telling them you all have lived your life done what you did and now you're here and things are not going to get any better God is requiring you to have something good, do some good, so that you will have something in the kingdom. So, here was the problem. You're already past that stage of watering it. You're already past that stage of putting good sod on your life. You're already past that stage of pruning it. Hopefully something will come out of it next time. John is telling them, there's no good here. We're all done. There's no profit to be made to do anything with these trees but cut it down. So you think God is being bad? You think John is prophesying some bad things against these people? Well, here's the truth. God isn't being bad. John the Baptist isn't being bad. He's not the bad guys here. The problem is, is that the leadership had an opportunity to obey God, take care of the people, and they didn't. And John is saying, well, judgment is coming. Judgment is right there and you're going to get axed right at the root because of your poor behavior. So what does that mean to us as individuals? What does that tree and us in the word of God in our lives have in common? Well, let's see what my notes say. My notes say that God saw, he says, I can see that there is nothing in your life about me he's saying and i am jealous god bear fruit unto me look to me your creator and live but since you have not i see no fruit this i can admit that you are cut off that the axe is in my hand and there you are there you are so here's the relationship what does this mean to me what does this mean to us we're not in Christ, we're not obeying, we have not done good deeds, we've not obeyed the word of God, so no fruit on this tree, it is cut off and thrown into the fire. How do we, how do we admit that? Why would I admit that? That I do good, I, I go to, the, I go to the, the food bank and I bring canned goods, I, I, I help at my church, I know I give to, to, to the events. I, I, I support United Way. I give to those things. Why would I be cut off? Why should I be concerned with this? What is it that I need to be doing? What is it that I'm missing here? You might ask that. You might feel that you're a good person. You might feel that you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's then what could this possibly be saying? Because that's exactly what the Pharisees were thinking too, the religious rights wingers, you might say. They were sure that they were doing everything right. But John said, uh-uh-uh-uh, no, you're not. You're not doing the good that God would require you to do. The first good for 2020, us here, is have we received Jesus Christ. That's the first thing. The second thing is, have we repented from our sins? That's the most important thing. And three, have we turned away from the things of the world? Have we turned away from the things that offend God? Have we turned away from the things that give us pleasure? From we turned away from those things that we think, well, this is mine, and it's special, and it's what I do, but it doesn't please the Lord. Everybody gets a check. 
people pick up their, uh, their pay, they do their work, that's what they should get. But there's people who cannot do that. There's people who cannot work. There's people who cannot take care of themselves. So you step over them on your way to your success. That's a problem. That's a problem because God wants us to meet the needs. God wants us to take care. God wants us to be concerned with our neighbor. The story of the Good Samaritan is perfect. The man was ill. He got beat up. He got left there, and it was those in robes, those in religious rites, stepped over his body and went the other way. The scripture records, but the good Samaritan stopped, and he made a difference. He did a good deed. He did good for the person. It wasn't those things that he was doing and making himself look good, and that's the difference. Sometimes we do things to look good, but we are not doing the good. Sometimes we look for stuff that make us feel special or important or valued, but sometimes we don't do the good within us, the ability to do good to people. Doing good to people, doing good to others is what he requires. Loving your neighbor as yourself, that's what he requires. And the Pharisees in that leadership, that they, they had all their deeds going down. They checked every law off, they thought, but the law of love they had omitted. And that's where the Lord says, I see no fruit in your life. I see no honor to me. I see no love for me, which translates into loving others. He says, I see what you're doing. You're making yourself look good. You're making yourself feel popular and you're grandiose and popular. He said, but you're not serving me with your heart. Your heart is far from me. And John was very critical of them. And John the Baptist argued with them. It was the leadership and their theology and their thinking that they could do the things that they wanted to that made them good. But John the Baptist says, no, you're empty sepulchers. You're painted white on the outside, but you don't have no love of God on the inside. And God saw that. What is the result of that? What is the result of doing all the special things that you think are advancing your relationship with Christ? It isn't. It doesn't. It doesn't prove to God nothing. It just says that you worship me with your lips, he said, but your heart is far from me. And that was the first problem the Lord had. What is the result of this? God is in our life and what he sees, what he knows, what he wants to do, we do it as unto him. God wants our personal relationship. God wants us to be useful to him. God wants us to obey him. God wants us to be ready to move heaven and earth <laughs> for him rather than ourselves. And if we're not ready to put God in that place as Lord and Savior, then we're living our life for ourselves. You're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing, they're doing their thing, so why should I worry about that? But God says, I don't want you to be doing your thing. I want you to do my thing. I want you to be concerned with me what I want. I want you to be tending to the poor. I want you to be open to people who are different or are hurt. I want you to feed. I want you to be gentle. I want you to visit the prisons. I want you to be doing those things that edify God. Do good works among men, the Bible says, that your Father in heaven will be glorified. That's what he's saying. That's what he wants. And the Pharisees and the leadership and the people were not doing those things. So... Let's answer the second question. How is this lived out? How is this lived out? How does God want us to live this life out that he's given us? That he has saved us, that he gave us eternal life, that Jesus died for our sins. What is this life supposed to look like? Because up until this point, we ain't got it. Okay. Put on the love of God first. Walk not after the flesh, but put on the love of God and do what it says. Put on love. Put on the mind of Christ. Let this mind be found you in you that was also in him. So it's actually put on one and take off the other. Take off the old and put on the new. Take off the old idea of self and put on the new idea, the Christ self. Put on the Holy Spirit self. Put on the God self. Take off the world, the worldliness of envy, jealousy, malice, pride, they ain't my problem, I don't have to deal with them, they live over there, I hope they don't come up in here, 
Those are the things we don't want to walk in anymore. So first we put on love. Put on love, which bears fruit unto God. Love begets love, okay? So we put on love for our neighbor. We put on love for our neighbor as we love ourselves. We put on love for God's people and we represent God to his people. We put on a mind of Christ and we walk in this mind. The old mind says, I can do it myself. They ain't a problem. I don't need these people up in here. I need help. Somebody come help me. No. When you put on the Christ, guess what? Let's work together. Let's figure this out. Let's walk not after the flesh of individuality. Let's come together as community. Let's think about how we can support each other. Let's, let's share what we have amongst each other. This is put on the love of God. This is how God wants us to be toward his children and toward each other. And he says, put on the mind of Christ and walk in it. He says, take off the worldly things and do not produce fruit of bad deeds. Produce fruit of good deeds. Take off the worldlyism and self-awareness and put on God-awareness. Take off the mind of the corruptible and put on the mind of the immortality. Put on the mind of the immortal that you will live forever. Behave like a person that's looking to kingdom principles. Behave like a person who's looking to live for God. This is what he wants us to do. Put on the mind of Christ and walk in God daily. Put on the word of God and obey it. Put on the mind of truth and walk in that truth. Put on the mind of grace and peace and mercy and show these things to others. These produce good fruit. These produce good trees. And you won't get axed because you're doing the good deeds. He says, do good works among men that your Father in heaven will be glorified. Let your light so shine among men that your Father in heaven will be glorified. This is what God is asking us to do. In times like these, we're not taking the easy way out. We're not taking the less traveled way out. We're taking the road that Jesus walked, the narrow way that leads to life. And the scripture says, wide is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the road to life and few thereof that find it. So to answer my third question, who benefits? Let's see. I will benefit for all the things that I do and I avoided judgment. See, you avoid judgment <laughs> at the end. That's a good benefit. I will because I agree with the word of God and I'm doing what the word requires. I am walking in love, walking in peace, walking in joy, walking in kindness, walking in gentleness, walking in self-control. I am producing fruit of the spirit. I'm producing fruit like Christ. I am producing fruit that comes from a good tree. A good tree, Bible says, produces good tree. A bad fruit comes from a bad tree and it's rooted up and it's axed, okay? So Cain, we're going to talk about Cain and fruit because Cain killed his brother because his sacrifice, the thought that he was given, his offering, he thought, was all that. He thought he was bringing a basket of vegetables and some grains and some fruit to God. That was his sacrifice. And guess what? His brother Abel brought a slaughtered animal. And the animal was laid on the altar. And Abel's sacrifice was accepted. People think like that. They say, this is good enough for God. I'll just put a can of soup in this, in this cooking bin for the, for the poor. I will just give the United Way $10 this week. Because last week I only gave him 5 they think that's the contribution. That's good enough. So Cain thought his contribution of some, um, some fruit and some vegetables was good enough. He said, this should suffice. Two things that come to mind. One, this is the almighty God. This is God of heaven in the universe. And giving him some baskets of fruit and some berries and some strawberries and some carrots, he was trying to pass off. If that's good enough, God says, I own all this. Is this all you got? This is the most valuable thing you could bring me, Cain? And his sacrifice wasn't accepted. We think like that. We can pass off stuff to God. We think that this is sufficient. 
We think that this will do. We think that this is, this is fine and it's, it's, it's quality, but really it's not time consuming. There's no loss in it. There's no sacrifice in it. It's just your normal routine of what you do. And guess what? That's not acceptable. God did not accept Kang's and he's not going to accept yours or mine. So Kang, the rest of the story goes, was angry at his brother. Hmm. And he ends up killing Abel. He kills his brother. Cain made three mistakes. One, he disrespected and did not know God. The second thing that led him to do is be rejected. He felt rejected. Now he's going to take out that rejection and kill his brother who did the right deed. Isn't that interesting what we do today? We don't feel the, we don't feel the love for God. We don't feel the connection to God. That breaks down our relationships where? To people. You lose your connection to God. You feel that God doesn't love you. You feel that you can't get nothing right, whatever it is, or you don't believe in God. Guess what? You break it down between you and people. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Next, love your neighbor, people as yourself. There's a circle. There's a connection there. And Cain lost that connection. Once he felt rejected by God, once he felt his, his sacrifice didn't work, but it wasn't God. It wasn't God. It was Cain's ineptness to value God, to bring something precious to God, to bring something valuable to God, rather than just some grapes and some potatoes and some fruit. It didn't work. But Cain's offering satisfied God. Cain's offering cost him, Abel's offering cost him something. Abel's offering satisfied God. Abe's Abel's offering was the best sheep he had and he slaughtered it and he killed it and he was one down one good sheep that was the sacrifice not a can of soup not throwing some money at a situation but you spending time with people you caring for people you giving your energy to people you putting your time into people you baking cookies and bringing them to your neighbor you baking cupcakes or or things that pies whatever it is you show the love rather than just throwing money at it and the pharisees and sarisees were good at throwing money into the bin ping 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 they would do that just to show money i'm here to throw money that was it you can throw money at anything but their heart wasn't there and God did not accept Cain's offering and God did not accept Cain's lack of respect for who he was and what God really deserved but he accepted Abel's sacrifice and it was accepted but Cain got jealous Cain got mad and Cain whacks his brother kills him and this third thing he does when God says to him, well, where's your brother? I hear his blood crying out in the, in the, in the fields. Cain says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I responsible for him? Well, there you go. Once you lose contact with God, once you let evil in your heart, once you turn away and stop obeying for God, guess what? You deteriorate toward other people too. You start to deteriorate from people and the love for people and the caring for people. And it all begins with losing your relationship with God. We got to understand if we want not to get the axe, if we want to do good deeds, then we have to build back our relationship with God so that he can direct us and bring us back to right relationship with people. You can't do the other way around. You're going to skimp on God. You're going to skimp on people. You're going to skimp and don't care about God. You're going to skip and don't care about people. And that's what Cain and Abel, that's what happened with Cain. He lost the relationship with God. He ran off and killed his brother. Had no respect for God. He lost respect for his brother. He kills his brother and he lies. I don't know where my brother is. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes to the Pharisees and Sadducees, John the Baptist was saying. Yes, we are responsible for our brothers and sisters. Yes, God tells us to love one another. Yes, so that we may bear good fruit of love and joy and peace and kindness and gentleness and meekness. Yes, we are to do those things. So, which of these offerings did God accept? He accepted Abel's because it cost him something. 
When Christ came into the world, God was giving us something that cost him something. God was giving the world something that was precious to him, his son. God gave us his only begotten son that was valuable to them, the relationship that they had. And then to see his son mocked and killed and beat, it hurt. It hurt. It hurt to see this. It hurt to feel this. But God gave what cost. God wants us to give what costs. God wants to care for each other that costs. God wants us to mount up the energy toward love and not give a cheap offering as if that's going to appease the gods or it's going to appease yourself, God, your self-image, your self-awareness, but it's certainly not going to make the Almighty happy and there's no fruit and then you're in trouble of the axe. <laughs> Here we go. Hannah, she wanted something from God. She prayed and prayed and prayed for a son. And guess what? God gave her the son. And know what she did? She gave the son right back to God to be raised in the temple to Samuel. The widow, the widow's might, she had a penny. She put all that she had in that penny. She put that penny in to the offering. She gave all. God gives all to her. God gave all to her. So look what happens when we give all to God. He says, I in you and you in me, the same bringeth much fruit. Wait a minute. He in us together, we bring good fruit. No acts. No, no acts. Just when we do the good with the Lord, we do the good with the Holy Spirit, we bear good fruit. We miss the acts. <laughs> we don't bear good fruit. We selfishness, individuality, self awareness, self grandization the acts because there's no fruit unto God. So here we go. Let's understand this. We're a garden. We're our garden. We're God's garden. And he's walking around his garden looking for trees that bear good fruit. I'll close with this. Every day we have a choice to decide, are we going to bear fruit unto Christ, unto God, that he's going to enjoy, that honors him, that blesses him, or are we going to make the mistake and try to do things to get what we want out of stuff, empty basket, some cheap offerings, or are we going to offer ourselves? God is looking for trees that bear fruit unto him, love unto him, caring unto him. We are responsible. We are responsible for the fruit that comes out of our life. We are responsible for the good deeds that we live here with to do. We are responsible as people unto God to do the right thing, to walk in his love, to produce love, to love our neighbor, to bear good fruit. We are responsible for that. Nobody can stop us from doing that unless we are like Cain, unless we like the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, self-righteous, Unless we think that, eh, God don't exist. I ain't worried about him. Let him do what he wants to do. I'm just being me. And that's what's going to get the axe. One more minute. So, here we go. The secret to eternal life. The secret to having a prosperous life. The secret is to bear good fruit. Do good deeds unto men that your father in heaven will be glorified. Don't be like Cain, breaking the relationship with God, ends up hurting people. Walk like Christ, who gave himself as a living sacrifice to bear good fruit unto God. And that's what we are to do. So, daily, do the good. In your mind, think of good things. In your heart, Turn that vessel over, let God circumcise your heart, that you will be thinking, moving, doing, bearing good fruit unto him. That's what he said, so I'm shouting it to the rooftops. That's what we're going to do. Do the good, and good begats good, love begats love, which there is no law. See you next time, and we'll shout it to the rooftops. Goodbye. Bye now. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.